Hello everyone. Good morning. This is Professor Todd Giles with AR105. We are starting our second video lecture for week five. We'll continue looking at the Baroque and then we'll look a little bit at Rococo and then Neoclassical. Now where we are here we just finished up looking at statues by Bernini and now we're moving into um, another area of Rome, the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. And Bernini is linked with this great uh, basilica. It's not a cathedral. Um, it's a basilica. Um, he is linked with it because he becomes one of the final interior designers, giving the look and the feel and the color of the space. Now the overall skeleton, the bones, the scale of it was decided back in the early 1500s under Julius II, who proceeded um, and had the idea, he conceived of the idea of having a new St. Peter's Basilica. And it goes all the way through the 1500s until what we see here, the facade is finished. And there were still other things that needed to be done. But the main building was done over 100 years or so. Okay. Um, so what we're going to see here is lots of pieces by Bernini, pieces by others, uh, architecture by others. And we'll just go through the history a little bit here. And look at some of the details. This by far is not a complete um, lecture or course on it. Um, there are wonderful videos online that you can find about the inside, the outside, the designs. Um, so this is really just an overview. Over the, although when I look at it, it looks like I'm giving you tons and tons of details. But I think I need to do that just so you understand the import of this piece. Well, it's not a piece, it's a great structure. So let's start with this. Um, you can see the dome, okay, designed by Michelangelo. The facade, which originally was designed by Michelangelo, but they changed it after he died, and Moderno was the new designer that came up with this. And quite honestly, there are many art historians and architects that look at this and just hate it. They really do not like it at all. And why? Okay, notice what this is here. It looks like a temple. There's the pediment. There are these grand, absolutely huge columns. And so it's starting to look like a temple, but then it's very wide here. But instead of having the pediment being the roof, they have this attic added on top of it. So it's really not cohesive. It doesn't really go with anything else within the building. The only thing that really goes with it is this line of detail, this type of column, that are these rectangular versus round columns. And this comes from the design for the rest of the building on the exterior by Michelangelo. So he came up with the idea of this proportion, this detail, this proportion, okay? And so he's making this totally brand new design. So Moderno does sort of swipe it across from the other sides, left and right, but he puts this in here, which is just, it just doesn't go, okay? Other things that we see here are these great statues on top of Jesus in the middle, carrying this cross, and then other, uh, the apostles and others there. Um, these are almost one and a half the size of, Mike, of uh, Michelangelo's David. These are some of these. This one in the middle is about 25 feet tall. So they're absolutely huge. Okay. Um, so let's look at some other details. Oh, let me go back here. The obelisk in the middle. 
is an Egyptian obelisk that was brought from Egypt by the ancient Romans. Now, it was placed here in the 1600s, but it had been way over here somewhere. And if the history is right, this is one of the posts that the um, Nero Hippodrome, the Nero uh, racetrack, if you will, um, chariot racing went on here. This is one of the turns that they had to go around. Um, now, it, it is ancient, ancient, ancient Egyptian. So more than likely, Moses could have seen this. It's that old. All right. Um, obviously, Peter probably saw it. Um, Paul may have seen this. So it is very ancient. Um, okay, look at the overall. Here's the uh, basilica. Here's the facade by Moderno. And everything that you see here, except for basically it's on this street is the boundary. This is the Vatican over here. And we can't see a lot of it. Um, but it's an independent state. It's its own nation. Uh, over here is a modern uh, building where the Pope comes and, and uh, greets the public. These are the papal apartments over here. Uh, they date back from around the 1600s. Um, Raphael painted pieces in here. Uh, other great artists did. It's just loaded with tons and tons of great art. And the official papal apartment is right here. And sometimes when he comes out and waves at the crowd, he's at these windows here. Okay, now back to Bernini. Bernini designed these colonnades on the left and the right. Okay, um, here's an overview. Oh, and by the way, those are not pigeons. Those are people. Here's an overview looking down on it. And you can see that he's coming up, Bernini is coming up with a new design. Instead of a colonnade being just a row of columns, what he does is something very Baroque. He takes the language that is already there, the columns, walkways, with co columns on either side, and he does something brand new where he curves it. It's like it's made out of putty. He can take it, instead of it being um, a form that he can only be one way, he changes it. Okay, Again, part of the Baroque. There's a fountain here and a fountain here, and he has these spokes. And then he has this area leading up to the facade of the cathedral. Now, interesting enough, notice that it's wider at the basilica than out from the basilica. Okay, and, and this is about 100 yards, by the way. We'll get into scale in a minute. Um, absolutely huge, this space. Um, Many times, especially when the, the Pope is being selected, this square is full to the brim with people, and it's said that it can hold a million people. Um, and having been there a few times, I can understand. It is absolutely huge. If you start here and start walking and walking and walking, it takes quite a while to get up to the facade. Okay, And the reason why these narrows you get farther from the basilica, it's an optical illusion. Remember, the Baroque is about theater. And what he's created is this narrow road comes in and it opens up. It's like drawing back the curtain. And you see this huge open space and you feel small, but it still is manageable space. Because of the scale of all of these, how tall the columns are here. Um, let me go back uh, here. You can sort of see, um, and this is in the middle, and it does actually go down a little bit before you get up to the facade. Anyway, it, it is just massive. Now, let's go ahead and look at the, I'm sorry, it's not a cathedral. It's a basilica. We'll look at this and look at the floor plan. Okay, here's the present St. Peter's Basilica. Um, 
and you can see these great columns holding up the dome. Um, anything that you see black here is touching the floor. These are chapels, chapels. These are side chapels, but notice that this, it's in the shape of a cross, okay, a capital T, like many of the great cathedrals of the Gothic. Okay, well, this is what Michelangelo designed. When he was given the opportunity to become the designer, he came in and he added a lot more strength to these piers, okay, holding this up. I said columns, but uh, technically they're piers because they are holding something else up, which is the dome. And here is the front that he had created with columns detached and a walkway underneath and then these three portals. So this would be the front porch. But after he died, they extended it quite a bit, two more bays, which this is a bay, that's a bay, to make it longer to make it more impressive coming in the door here, which the Pope can only come in this door, um, coming in this door and looking down, and I'll show you some images in a second, of just how remarkable this place is, okay? So they've really changed it up. Now, how big is this place? Well, it's almost 700 feet inside, not including the atrium in the front and it's 450 feet from wall to wall on the crossing and right in the middle is the great uh, altar with for the catholic church okay so it's immense now how big is that let's take a look okay if you take the inside of the pantheon it wouldn't even touch the piers Okay, um, and we talk about how huge that building is. So let's bring it into something that we might be able to recognize. Um, a football field, 100 yards from goal line to goal line, doesn't even make it to the altar. Okay, it's almost two complete football fields long, including the end zones. Okay. So absolutely immense, okay? Um, now, if you like baseball, here's Wrigley Field. And within the square of the main portion of the church, you can fit an entire professional baseball diamond inside of it, the whole field, not just the infield diamond. It's huge. In fact, inside the piers here, the whole infield would be able to be fit comfortably. It is absolutely immense. I know I can't say it enough, okay? Um, and on this facade, it's almost a complete football field wide. Now, um, one thing here on the facade, these are tourists waiting, and when you look at how massive this is compared to the people. This detail on the column, on the base, excuse me, is if I'm standing next to it, it is about as high as what I can touch. These people are back on the railing, so they're not real close to it. So it's about seven and a half, almost eight feet tall. These doors are like 30 feet tall here. These are about 25 feet tall. So scale has something to do with it because from afar, like this, like this, they need to look comfortable. So the designers, the architects, have designed things to be huge because the whole building is huge. If we just had little small columns, it wouldn't look right. Um, Okay, um, now this is inside of the porch, and we're going to finish up this segment and go to the next one and continue to talk about St. Peter's.